Okay, let's look at this one. It's a good one. It's, it's tough. It'll be interesting. All right, so we've got steam that's leaving a 4-liter pressure cooker whose operating pressure is at 150 kPa. It's observed that the amount of liquid in the cooker has decreased by 0.6 liters in 40 minutes after the steady operating conditions are established and the cross-sectional area of the um, exit opening is 8 millimeters squared. So you see what's happening. This liquid water is boiling to vapor. So this is a saturated liquid vapor mixture. And, um, all right, so let's see what we've, what we've got and what we're looking for. Determine the mass flow rate of the steam and the exit velocity. So the steam is exiting. So we want the mass flow rate of the steam exiting. So, so how many kilograms per second? Remember, units would help us out. How many kilograms per second? Uh, so exiting. Uh, did it give us any time? The amount of liquid in the cooker has decreased by 0.6 in 40 minutes. So, so we know in 40 minutes, the amount of liquid has decreased by 0.6 liters. So uh, it, it didn't tell us the kilograms that it decreased by, but it did tell us the volume so the, let's see, 0 0.6, let me just write this down. Sometimes it's helpful to write down what is given in the problem statement. 0 0.6 liters of liquid has left, all right? So that's the volume of liquid that has exited. But if we want the mass of liquid that has exited, all right, so this is the volume of liquid, volume of liquid, that has escaped, uh, but we want mass of that liquid that became vapor that has escaped. Uh, if we have volume but we want mass, how can we find that? Do you remember those problems where we want mass, but they didn't give us mass, they gave us volume. How can we find the mass from the specific volume? So let's think about this liquid what is the specific volume of the liquid? It's liquid that is changing to uh, gas. It is saturated liquid. What is the specific volume of saturated liquid at 150 kPa? This is steam. Steam means water, all right? Uh, so we could get that from our property tables. Table A5. So table A5 the specific volume of saturated liquid at 150 kPa, 0 0.001053 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, now, why did we look at this saturated, uh, the saturated liquid? You know, isn't it the saturated vapor that is escaping? Uh, yeah, but, but because they told us the volume of the liquid and they didn't tell us the volume of the gas that has escaped, they told us the volume of the liquid that has escaped, but we want the mass of the liquid, then that's why we use the saturated liquid, the specific volume right here. So we want the mass. Uh, the mass would be big V over little v. Let me see if that's right. Think about these units here. Big V is 0 0.6 liters, um, but we know that a meter cubed, 0 0.6 liters, uh, one th right, divide that by a thousand to get meters cubed, and point zero zero, just two zeros, point zero zero one oh five three meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, do the units cancel out? Yeah, kilograms in the denominator. In the denominator is really kilograms in the numerator. Point five seven zero kilograms. Point five seven zero kilograms is the mass that has escaped, we haven't answered the question yet, m dot, 0. 0.570 kilograms has escaped in 40 minutes. Do you mind if I go ahead and, and change that to seconds? 2.37 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms per second. Whew. All right. 2.37 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms per second. So that is the mass flow rate 
just one little part of this problem of part A. All right, how about the exit velocity? How about the exit velocity? All right. Uh, let's see. I know that m dot is rho v a. So if I know the rho, the v, the a, I, I know that um, this rho is, is 1 over uh, lowercase v. So I could do v a over lowercase v. I don't think we kind of wrote that equation, but I think that's a qu an equation that we use enough m dot, not only is it rho v a, but it's v a over v, you know, v a over the specific volume. So here, uh, if I know the mass flow rate, if I know the um, cross-sectional area, yeah, the exit at the opening, cross-sectional area of the opening, 8 millimeters squared, uh, do I know the v? Let me be careful, all right. I had to use the V of the liquid because it told me the volume of the liquid that has left. Um, but here, if I want the velocity and the cross-section area at, of the outlet, uh, then, then I've got, I need the specific volume of the steam. Specific volume of the steam. So here, I need the saturated vapor specific volume. Steam, saturated vapor, at 150 kPa, at 150 kPa is one point. All right, so let's let's. This would be 1.1594 meters cubed per kilogram. Go to my property tables, uh, table A5. Uh, get the VG. All right, VG per kilogram. All right, so the M dot, I know the M dot, 0. 0.237 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms per second equals velocity is what I'm looking for. Cross-sectional area is uh, 8 millimeters squared. Do I want everything in millimeters squared? Uh, it's 8 millimeters squared. I would divide it by a thousand to get it to meters, but it's squared, so I actually need to divide it by a thousand twice. I don't know how y'all do your unit conversions, uh, but I would change divided by a thousand and divided by a thousand again, right? To change millimeters squared to meters squared, divided by a million, right? And then divided by 1.1594 meters cubed per kilogram. Does this work out? Look at the units. This is meters per second. This cancels out meters cubed on top, meters cubed on the bottom. Uh, so left on the right-hand side are seconds and kilogram in the denominator, in the denominator. So, so yes, my units do work out. I would get a velocity 34.3 <clears throat> meters per second velocity of 34.3 meters per second. And that was just part A. All right. You've got to be able to juggle these M dot, V dot, rho V A, V A over V, capital V over lowercase V. Um, there's no one, there's no one route for these problems and there's no one process for these problems. But I'm telling you, units, that's, that's what I'll do. That's what I look at, units. Think about what units we need, our answer, you know. Exit velocity is, is meters per second. The mass flow rate, kilograms per second. And then make sure you uh, manipulate everything and make sure you get those units correct. Okay, how about the total and flow energies of the steam per unit mass? The total energy and the flow energy of the steam per unit mass. All right, the total energy of a flowing fluid is H plus V squared over 2 plus GZ. So let's start there. H plus V squared over 2 plus GZ. The flow energy is just P times V. We'll look at Some of those. 
Okay, but let's start with total energy. Do I know the H? Let's see, total energy of what? Total energy of the steam that is exiting, right? So I think it's a safe assumption that it's exiting as a saturated vapor at 150 MPa. It's exiting at, there we go, 34.3 meters per second. Uh, I think we can assume there's no change in height. Remember that the change in height, unless it's a very, very, very tall change in height, and this is just a steam in a, in a pressure cooker, uh, there's, no, not, there's not very, very much a potential energy change in height there. Uh, so we can neglect that. All right, so theta is going to be from the table A5. Uh, see if you get this 26, 93.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, the velocity is 34.3 meters per second squared over 2. Now this, the units do not work out. Meters squared per second squared it is a joule over a kilogram. We could think about why and how joule is newton meters, newton kilogram meters per second squared, uh, but in general my, my line of thinking is the V squared over 2, if I'm just in meters per second, which most of the time I am, if I'm just in meters per second, I've got to divide it by 1,000. I've got to divide it by 1,000 to convert uh, it to kilojoules because that's in kilojoules. Um, generally, that, that velocity squared term is not going to be very large in general. We could look at what 100 meters per second corresponds to um i've done that before we, we can think about 100 meters per second corresponds to how many kilojoules per uh, kilogram uh but anyway if, if you have a term here that's you know 500 or a thousand then you probably have forgotten to uh, divide it by a thousand all right here we go theta would be 2693.1 kilojoules per kilogram plus 0.588 kilojoules per kilogram. And you see how, how we can sometimes neglect kinetic energy and potential energy? Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about here. We can sometimes, can sometimes neglect Ke and Pe. Uh, 45, here we go, 45 meters per second corresponds to one kilojoule per kilogram. Uh, 100 meters per second Oh, sorry. Yeah, 45 meters per second of kinetic energy corresponds to one kilojoule per kilogram. And if we're talking about 2,000, you know, does one really matter? Uh, so if we get above 45, if we get above 100, then, then that's good. How about potential energy? Potential energy, 100 meter change in potential energy is one kilojoule per kilogram. So if we're only talking about, you know, a very small, I mean, 100 meters, that's a huge change in potential energy. Uh, even if it was 100 meters, then uh, it's a very small uh, energy per unit mass. So here we go. Our theta would be 2693.7 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, that's the total energy. How about the flow energy? How about flow energy? Flow energy is P times V. Or uh, we know that H equals U plus PV. So it's also the difference in uh, enthalpy and internal energy. Okay, Flow energy is either P times specific volume or the difference in H and U. So here, let's first let's do PV. I'm going to do both of those just to show you, maybe just to prove it. Um, so let's call this, I don't know, flow energy. I don't have a good or flow work. I'll just say FW. Uh, 150 kPa uh, times the V, and this is of steam from the property table, 1.1594 meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, so this would be 173.91 kilojoules per kilogram. 173.91 kilojoules per kilogram. A KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. Okay, or flow work is the difference in H and U. 
From the property tables, 2693.1 kilojoules per kilogram for saturated vapor. 2519.2 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, we've got 173.9. I mean, look at that. All right. So we could calculate that either way. Calculate the flow work by either pressure times specific volume or the difference in enthalpy and internal energy. All right, that is the energy, whoops, sorry. This is the energy of the fluid going out of the outlet. The energy of the fluid going out of the outlet. So if we want the rate at which energy leaves the cooker by the steam, if we want E dot, we can just take the M dot times the energy of the fluid exiting E dot would be M dot times theta. It would be 2.37 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms per second times the 26, what do we get up here? Right here, 2693.7 kilojoules per kilogram. There we go. The E dot that we might end up using in other problems um, in our conservation of energy equation in the future, uh, 0.638 kilowatts. A kilojoule per second is a kilowatt. All right, a big problem. But pause it, rewind, take a step back, and look at the overall equations we've used uh, and how we got there. Units are important.